Yeah, greetings everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, if you are actually uh, just watching, I will say I welcome you to our platform, which is uh, transforming grassroots football and players. And today, we'll be having uh, my guest, which is uh, the super agent himself, uh, Ata Aneke, the agent of Odion Igalo. Uh, we are trying to see how we can invite him to the platform. I think uh, he will join us any moment from now. But if you're actually just watching, kindly please uh, drop your location, where you're watching from, and uh, let's know where everybody is uh, watching us from so that everybody watching will know where and who we are. So while we are waiting for our, our, our guests to come online, so I want to use this opportunity to welcome everybody. Uh, I welcome uh, Mr. Akin of Femak. I can see you. Uh, Shegun, my very good friend, uh, I can see you as well. Uh, Mr. Olongu Shai Rafael, I can see you. Onome Jackson, I can see you. Uh, while we are still trying to wait for our guests to join us, uh, we'd like everyone to, to welcome each other to the platform. The whole idea of this platform is for we to see how we can uh, change the narrative of the grassroots football in general and how we can how we can take it to the next level and also how we can actually educate uh the young ones mr shola from turkey thank you for joining i see you you're welcome sir uh how we can educate the young ones especially the grassroots players for them to understand uh what it takes or what it means to become a professional and uh, we know the problem we're having at the grassroots majorly is lack of education from the players, from the coaches, and even uh, from some of us, uh, the proprietors. And uh, like uh, they always say, uh, a good coach makes a good player. And not only a good coach, a good proprietor makes a good player as well. And uh, we'd like to invite our guests to also come in and join us. Uh, Mr. Atta, can you please come in? Uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to see how we can bring in our guest. He's also trying to call me. Uh, Mr. Atta, are you there? I'm trying to add him up now. To add him up. Uh, if you're just watching, kindly please drop your location and where you're watching from. Uh, okay, Mr. Atta is almost on. Oh, good to have you, sir. Yeah, yeah, good good to I'm have here. you. Uh, thanks, the network thanks. has been so, so, thanks. so, so... Uh, it's not uh, funny here today. I don't know what's happening to the MTN. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to, I want to welcome okay. you to the to, to our platform, the uh, Transforming the Grassroots Football and Players. And uh, the whole idea of this platform is to see how we can actually educate, uh, especially the grassroots players and the people around the sector and uh, so which sure. we can uh, see or change uh, the narrative. Uh, first of all, I also still want to welcome you. I want to thank you out of your busy schedule. You still took out your time to join us on this program and uh, to actually share your thoughts about uh, what you think uh, are the way forward of uh, the grass. So first of all, let me introduce you. Uh, if you are just watching, uh, this is uh, the super agent, Mr. Ata Neke. The man who break the jeans, being the first agent, having the first Nigerian player in Manchester United. And uh, we say he has the first player in the theater of dream. Sometimes we all dream, but we, we are more happier mm -hmm. when our dream come true. We must be happy as well as yeah. Odeon became the first Nigerian. And also you being the first agent, having the first Nigerian in the theater of dream. I would say this is the man that holds the Scandinavian market and the China market. And even... Uh, E.D. Hood, nine guy, like we always say, E.D. Hood, nine guy, he, hold, he also <laughs> holds Manchester United in his pocket. 
uh, we are going to speak with you about grassroots play and scouting. But, you know, obviously, we have to talk yeah. a little bit about our, our main man, uh, the superstar of Nigeria, uh, which is uh, Odeon himself. Uh, many people don't know you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, many people don't know you. And many people don't know some of your players. But I think uh, if I will mention a few that I know, uh, Odeon being number one, uh, Aaron Samuel, uh, yeah. I think uh, if I match you, Mm. Uh, we have uh, Jerome, Ar Jerome, yeah. Arco, which, uh, Jerome Arco, which uh, was part of the under-20 under 20 team. And I think uh, Moses Ebiye, the guy who moved yeah. from, uh, what was he called, from Ikodu United, if I could remember very well. And I think uh, La Akim Latifu, yeah. who is also doing very well in uh, Norway. Uh, and uh, the, we, yeah, sure. and uh, the, the sensational, the, I say the Ongbono Feli Feli player, in uh, Holland, uh, Chidea Ojuke, uh, you know, where the, the odd, odd, yeah, 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 I would right. say the odd, odd, you know, like uh, my Yoruba people will say, oh, <laughs> bono feli feli. and my, my evil brothers in Yaba will say, better market, <laughs> better market need to for anger. So I don't know if uh, <laughs> you understand what, what I mean. So it's a privilege to have you on this yeah, platform. Yeah, sure, sure, I do. Uh, it's a privilege to have you on this uh, platform. Thanks. And uh, the whole of the idea of this platform is... Uh, thanks, thanks. Is for we to transform the grassroots players and football in Nigeria. So I want to welcome you once more. Yeah. And uh, I want this opportunity to... Thanks, it's a pleasure. To also welcome everybody watching all over the world. Uh, this platform has actually, uh, yeah. from our first day we started, we've also been having a very good feedback. And our first view was about uh, 4,000 views, you know, all over the world. And our second view, wow. about uh, yeah. 3,000 views and all that. And... We, we've been getting mm. a lot of feedback from coaches, from uh, grassroots players, and they, they, they see that this platform is uh, a very educating one. And uh, before we go in, I would like you to please kindly uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so that people watching will know who we are actually speaking with. Yeah, uh, like you said, after Nick, yeah, uh, been an agent for 13, 14 years now. Wow. Uh, based in Oslo, Oslo, Norway, uh, Nigerian dad, uh, Norwegian mom, uh, born, born in Norway, um, but always been coming to, to Nigeria since I was a kid, um, having family there and my dad now living in, in Lagos. Wow. So that's, that's basically, basically me. And uh, uh, my dad is actually the reason why I started off as an agent wow. because he um, he was running a team, uh, Oslo City Football Club okay. in uh, in Oslo, and um, that's where um, I did my football education. I would say okay. uh, helping players, um, yeah, getting into the business that way. So uh, we went all the way to the second league in, wow. in Norway. So um, wow. yeah, uh, that's the that's the major reason. Wow, yeah. wow! I will actually I will actually sure. say the, the mm. business run in the family. <laughs> yeah, it does, uh, it does, it does. So foot, foot, football has been in my blood since. Uh, I was wow, a kid. wow! It's great. It, yeah. It's great to know. It's great to know yeah. this. And you know, a business that is actually like uh, that has a lineage in that uh, in the family or is a family lineage tends to also tends to always strive very well or tends to always do very well. And I must say, uh, dad must be very proud of you. And we, 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 uh, uh, we Nigerians are also very, 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 very proud of you with the work you've been doing over the years. Uh, uh, I would say, yeah, you're actually very welcome, sir. And, uh, you know, like, it's, it's a normal thing for mm -hmm. us on this platform. Uh, we always like to make people get attached to, to the Nigerian roots, you understand? And uh, you yeah, being sure. a Nigerian, like, uh, like I was yeah. saying, what Nigerian food do you like most or what Nigerian uh, delicacy do you actually like? And uh, also what Nigerian music do you also love? Uh, especially the uh, Nigerian yeah. hip hop, uh, the, maybe the Shaku Shaku or any of the Nigerian uh, music that uh, you, you listen to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, growing up with my my dad, uh, we were always cooking Nigerian food at home. I actually know how to cook some of the uh, soups as well, like uh, wow. obono, igusi, <laughs> stuff like that too. So, so uh, also also in my household, I have two daughters, Philippa and wow. Felicia, and at least once a week they have to eat they have to eat the eba wow. or something like that wow. for sure. Wow. That's 
Yeah, so uh, Nigerian food has been part of me since since okay. I was born, and uh, and it will always be so uh, yeah. for sure. So it's hard to to give you a favorite. What What about the music? What about the music? Yeah. What about which of the music do you like to listen to? The, almost all. That's all I listen to in in the car. So uh, I mean, there's so many good artists in in Nigeria. It's hard to kind of point out one, but you have so, so many good ones. So uh, everybody that knows me knows that I don't listen to uh, R and B, rap, or anything like that in my car. It's strictly Nigerian all all the way. Yeah, like like so like the sure. like the Zlatan Ibile, Shaku Shaku, Whiskey, David O. Sure, sure. Uh, can, yeah. can you give us, can you give sure. us a, maybe a shaku shaku step while you're sitting? Is it possible? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that to you for sure. Uh, no, for no, sure. no problem. You know, no. it, it's very good yeah. when we, 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 we are attached to our, our, our tradition. Is uh, We are attached to uh, to the Nigerian. So it's, it's always uh, gives us an sure. edge over every other person. So like, uh, I would also like to ask, mm. Having, having all these players I mentioned, the ones I could remember, mm. you know, uh, you know, what kind of yeah. relationship do you, do you keep with them? And how does this relationship help to strengthen and thinken the relationship between you and these players? Because sometimes I, I always see, uh, or I see, or some see, uh, uh, maybe when you are with uh, Dion family, you know, you are with Aaron's family, you know, uh, because uh, this yeah. relationship, uh, we don't know how it has actually helped the relationship between you and them. So I wanted to say a little bit about it so that some of us can also still learn being an agent or manager or coaches and all that. Yeah, I think um, when you're an agent, it's not all about business. Uh, you need to really care for the player. You need to be there uh, outside of the field as well. You need to be somebody that's present, not only when they're signing contracts, but you also have to show that you care for them as yeah. human beings and and, and brothers uh, as well. So a player like uh, Igalo was actually uh, the first player I, I brought to Norway. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2007. Oh, we, we, and we still we're still working talk about together. That. We still want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can hear you. Sure. So, yeah, so it's not only about me um, kind of having a good relationship with him, but he also has his, uh, I mean, his kids, uh, his family. Yeah. And I've known the mom since day one as well. So I think honesty is is number one. Uh, in this business, you have so many people that only think about yeah. themselves instead of looking out for of the, the interests of the players. So, yeah. So I think when most players, you can't say all, but most players, when they meet somebody that's uh, honest, genuine, and transparent, they will want to keep that relationship through the career. So I think... That's been the major point for me. I've also had other players that I've worked with for so many years. You mentioned Aaron yeah. Samuel. You mentioned this Daniel Chimachuku that's been there since 2009. So many others. I'm scared to leave some out, but uh, there are many, many players like Kim Latifu, other players that have kind of been a part of their life for, for, uh, for more than 10 years now. So um, I, can, yeah. I, I can say... I, I, I can mm. say uh, you, you're actually doing a very good job. Uh, like uh, a, a word I will pick from what you just said, honesty. Uh, honesty is very, very mm. important for you to be able to have a very long career with, uh, with a player. And I think some of the agents or maybe managers sure. that are watching can be able to learn from this. Because uh, like you said, now football is not just only about uh, the business. It's not just only about the signing of the contract. No. What is most important is to keep yeah. that relationship so that you can be there for them as many years as possible. And uh, if I may say, the more you are there, the more money you are making. Abby. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. And I think, I think too many agents have this idea that... Um, you have to make as much money as you can as soon as you can because you well, never know happened? if the player is going to be yeah, loyal. Yeah. Yes, but I don't, I don't go into business thinking that way. I think for the long term. So when I see a player and I like him and, and we do a deal, I'm looking 10 years ahead. If he wants to uh, change agents after two years that's or four years, that's up to him. But I know he's the one, yeah, he's the one losing out, not me. So 
I think if you have that approach and you do what you're doing because you love it and you don't do it for money, mm -hmm. money will always come. That's that's what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's that's the mm. key word. That's what my mother used to tell me. Whatever you are doing, put put in mm. passion and naturally the money will start looking for yeah. you. And uh, if if if, yeah, if I may <laughs> say, having this uh, long list of players, especially uh, the top players, and I, I know some some of the younger ones are still there that you are still trying to to cater for yeah. as as well. Sure. But having this long list of players, mm. how, how do you maintain the same level of relationship with all these top players that you have to be there for them at the appropriate time and order? How do you manage all this? Yeah, I, I also have to point out that I have a really great team around me. Um, I have uh, people like Atai. Atai is I, not I, only my uh, uh, my my scout, <laughs> but also a wonderful friend. Yeah, he's also that watching. I've, uh, I think had around me for. Yeah. Okay. So he's a great guy. Um, There's so many more to mention. You have the Christer, um, which is a a scout with the company in Norway. You have. We have a bigger team in Nigeria. We have uh, Osas. We have others as yeah. well. But we also have a set of good academies that we work yeah. with in in uh, Nigeria. I would mention your your academy or your club being a fantastic uh, fantastic club. Thank you very uh, much, Team Three Hundred and Sixty. But then you also you also have uh, GLEC like, yeah. uh, that we've done many things yeah. with uh, FC Hearts. You have so many teams or academies that we feel we have a great relationship with that we can always uh, um, we, we know that they scout the whole of Nigeria we know that they try to find the best players and we work with those kind of academies because yeah we know we can have, have the absolute best so I think the answer to your question is having a great team around you um, them also caring for the players in the same way makes you better equipped to kind of be able to have that relationship with more than just one player, two players, or three, but kind of being a family and and yeah, that's what I believe in. So yeah, having a good team is is number one. Surround your people yourself with people that also are not just yes people, people that don't don't just tell you yes in everything you say, but people that give you ideas, uh, people that would always challenge you to take a new step in in your management company. Wow. So uh, that's been the key for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, I think uh, mm. I, I will give three busa to the team Ata Aneke busa 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 yeah, because uh, <laughs> it, it's it's not going it, it's not an easy job for you to be able to maintain that kind of relationship with that long list of players when you don't have a very good team who understand your vision and uh, uh, the direction at which sure. uh, you want to work and the easiest way for any company to strive yeah. to strive well is when you have people who are working in the same vision or the same direction at which uh, you are you are working and i will say uh, kudos to all team Ata and Nikki that are watching i'll say you guys are, are are the are the bomb well done everyone uh thanks. i i will say uh, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks. How, how do you feel uh, because i i watched uh Odeon, uh interview on uh, elegate tv uh, and he said something like okay. uh uh, uh, this uh, him moving to Manchester United is not the first time Manchester was actually calling. You understand that? Uh, I think he said mm. uh, when he was in Watford, uh, the uh, the they came calling and all that. But I I I, I listened on, on the interview briefly. So I, I I want to know what when you first of all heard about uh, the deal. How do you feel and how did or do you feel? What what came through your mind? Like Manchester calling for my player. Yeah, I mean, um, like like he said uh, already when he was doing really well for, for Watford, uh, we had some meetings there, we had some discussions, and uh, unfortunately it didn't work out then. But then at the later stage, when uh, everyone thought a move like that wouldn't be possible, going from Shanghai in the Chinese league, going to the Premier League, um, when I kind of saw that it could become a reality, uh, we were all kind of, um, I wouldn't say shocked, but at the same time, we couldn't really believe that this was about to happen. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's been a great dream from day one. Uh, Odion has always had his, uh, it was his favorite club. Uh, he wanted to play at the Theatre of Dreams. So uh, it's a big thing, not only for him, for me, 
for millions and millions of fans in in yeah. Nigeria as well. And I know that yeah, even even fans that are not United fans in Nigeria, maybe Chelsea fans, or Arsenal fans, they're on loan to Manchester United as fans <laughs> while he's while he's there because. Uh, yeah, it means a lot to the whole of the country to have a player like that uh, playing for a big club. It's obviously a big thing for all of us as well. I, 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 I must mm. say Manchester United must be very happy having him because I'm very sure uh, they, they, they will have the 200 millions of Nigeria behind Manchester United now. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, if, yeah I sure. may ask, if I may ask before now, what team mm. do you support? Because I'm very sure you'll be supporting Manchester United now as well. What team do you support before now? Uh, to be honest, I've I've never kind of had one favorite team. It's more like the teams where I have players. Those. So, uh, but sure, in the Premier League now, it's Manchester United all the way. Yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that's just what I want to hear. That is what yeah. I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, if anything, like if anyone should ask me now and ask me, Akim, what team are you supporting? I would say I support only Team Three Sixty. You have yeah. to support where where your sure. where your where your money is. Like my evil brother used to say, they would say, "Put your mouth where your yeah. money is." <laughs> True, <laughs> you understand. And I, I will say that True. that's a, a great True. one. That's a very great one for me and the team. Yeah. And I, uh, and again on this mm. uh, on the second deal, like having looked very impossible, like the second loan deal. You understand? Mm. We know everybody were like, "Will it happen? Will it not happen?" And you know, most of we yeah. Nigerians, because uh, what we what we saw. What Odion did, uh, it, it shocked so many people. You understand? It shocked because so many people never gave yeah. him that chance of uh, of doing. Of, they never no, gave they him didn't. that chance. But it, it, it shocked so many Nigerians. Not only Nigerians, even all over the world. You can see uh, uh, some of the even the yeah. uh, Manchester United legends were like saying, uh, "Why would they bring him?" But when he came, he, he shocked everybody, and the, the, the story turns around. And when the deal was actually looking not too good, everybody, for me as a person, I wasn't happy. That's the truth. I wasn't happy. I was like, ah, yeah. what's going to happen? Is he going to just play two, three, four games? Because what happened to, what's his name? Uh, uh, the, this guy in Togo. Uh, what's his name? This guy in Togo, uh, Sheyi. Uh, uh, yeah, Sheyi. Yeah, Sheyi. Uh, uh, yeah. Manuel uh, Sheyi. Sheyi Adebayo. Yeah, Sheyi Adebayo. Adebayo, Adebayo yeah. yeah. That just had... Mm. Uh, I think a couple sure. of games in uh, Real Madrid, you know, and uh, uh, I would say mm. in, uh, in such player, Real Madrid passed through him. He didn't pass through Real Madrid. And we yeah, don't true. want Odion to allow uh, Manchester United to pass through. We want Odion to pass through Manchester United. Make him mark in Manchester United. Mm. You're scoring a lot of goals. And sure. even possibly, which we believe it will still happen. Because uh, we always believe on his word. We always say grace is better than labor. You understand? We believe. Mm. Yeah, we believe. Sure. We believe. Sure. Ed Wood will still bring out that empty check and and give to because we want to see more of him in uh, in, in in Manchester United. So what actually? What 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 in this second loan deal? What did you do? Like what effort did you actually make to make it happen at all costs? Because I would like the whole fans and everybody to also uh, listen. Yeah, of course, it's a very complex uh, deal because you have uh, Shanghai Shenhua where he belongs to yeah. his parent club and uh, you need to make them happy yeah. as well and United uh, also. So um, I, I had the belief the whole time that the deal was going to go through. Even when we were approaching the last days of the window, I still had the belief that we would uh, pull it through. And luckily we did. I mean, it's a loan that's extended until the end of, January and we'll still see more more great things but everybody in the football business knows that deals like that are not simple yeah. it takes lots of diplomacy and yeah. and that's why it's I mean good to have a good agent as well because you you're the kind of ambassador yeah. or, or diplomat trying to make the two teams Cons come yeah. closer and at the end you yeah you you finish the deal so um so yeah it was a great Great deal once again, and um, yeah, yeah, exciting to to watch him now. I, I mm. must say you did you did a, a very a very a very 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 good job there because uh, if I may pick anything from your word, you just said diplomacy. You must be able to mm. balance. You must be yeah. able to balance both sides. You must not allow one side to be angry, and you must also still uh, make everything True. perfect so that everything will work at 
at the favor at which uh, you, you want. Yeah. So uh, if uh, I, I may go yeah. in into Odeon a little bit, where, sure. how, yeah. when did you scout in? How, when, where? Yeah, it was... Hmm. Um, actually, it was uh, 2007. That's 13 years uh, I would now? Say maybe, yes, maybe at the end of 2006. Wow. Um, it was my first trip to, to Nigeria for scouting uh, when I decided to become an agent. And then um, I actually saw him. Um, there were three players at that point it was Chukuma, Kabuese, Akabuse. Bentley. It was, uh, yeah, it was Igalo and it was Kim Ojo. So the three of them came for trial at uh, Lean, Lean Oslo. Uh, but at that point, um, they were, it was only allowed with two foreigners, two non-EU yes. players in each squad. And yes, and Lean Oslo already had Mikel and uh, Obasi. Obasi yeah. So at that point, uh, yeah, when they sold Mikel, then there was room for, oh, for Igalo. So uh, yeah, the first, time, the first time I saw him was uh, in Lagos. Um, and I also watched him in the under-23 camp okay. um, when Samson CSI was the coach. Okay. Um, so that's actually where, where I spotted him. But also I have to give credit to uh, Pastor Tony Adiele. That was one of the guys that introduced me to, to uh, Odeon. So, um, yeah, uh, and a couple of other people as well. Yeah. So that's how I saw him. And I immediately, not only that he had the skills of a good player, but he also had a fantastic mentality. And that matters quite a lot. You could see already then that he was hungry to succeed. He had the right mindset. He was humble. He was hardworking. To give an example, um, when he signed for Lino Slow, summer of 2007, when he had a uh, Christmas break in December, and they wanted to buy him a ticket to go back to Nigeria. He said, no, wow. uh, I want to stay. I want to stay and work hard. I want to do extra, uh, training. extra training before the rest of the squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before the rest of the squad comes back. And that shows uh, the kind of hunger he had to succeed. And you see the same thing now. He's, he's a big player, but anytime he has a holiday in Lagos, working. you see him working out with the personal trainer ev every day. And, and to have that hunger still at the later stage of his career is uh, it's really impressive I, 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 I would say i would say that is that that has actually been what has been pushing him because uh, for any play for any yeah. player for you to be successful if you don't have that hunger for you to be at the top will will be very difficult like we also even be seeing uh, uh, ronaldo uh, ronaldo that's Cristiano ronaldo we see he also mm. uh, a, a very hard worker and he works a lot as well and I think this is a very typical advice for sure. every young or grassroots player that is watching, that you need to have that hunger for you to, to be at the top. Yeah. And uh, as you can even, uh, you can even sure. say, with what you just said now, even having achieved a lot in his career, being at the highest goal scorer of the AFCON, he still works hard because he, he, he has not actually achieved the yeah. target at which... Uh, he wants, and I, I think part of the dream is now is for him to be playing in in Manchester United. So if if you are a grassroots player, or even if you are a professional player playing, and you are watching this program now, my advice for you, like what super agents said, is you must be an hard worker. You must be hungry for success. You must mm. always work even mm. behind the doors when everybody are not watching. Because left for me, you see some yeah, players yeah. now. Immediately, the club said they want to buy them tickets. You see, oh, I want to start going back home. I want to go and see my family. I want to go and see my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I want to go and see this. And at the end of the day, what happens to such players? Sure. They don't, they don't, they don't, uh, uh, they don't reach their potential at which I would say this is a very good one and a very great one from you. And if if I, yeah. if I would say other players you have on your list, you know, like you said now, Odeon mm. is from uh, the National Under 23 camp and all that. He came, I came mm -hmm. to, to what's it called, to Leno Slow. Which of the grassroots player like you actually scouted yeah. from the grassroots that maybe from any of the academy that is unknown, that never tasted the national team, and now that is actually doing very, very well? Because I, I, I want us to use this platform to also change the mindset of some agents that might be watching. 
that believe that, oh, the best player mm -hmm. is only in the national team. And I must say, you have a lot of them under your belt that did not even taste the national team. Like Jerry Marco before he went to the national yeah. team, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the, uh, uh, the one in uh, Holland yeah. now, that's, I, I think the general is also going yeah. to give him an invite, never tasted the national team. So I wanted to, yeah. give, Ch I, Chidera, Chidera, yeah. I wanted to give a list of some that never tasted the national team, unlike Odio that tasted before you took him. There's so many. I mean, majority never had any national team experience before I took them to, to Norway, especially from uh, Nigeria. You have so many others. You have uh, Aaron Samuel. You have uh, Suleiman Abdullahi. You have uh, Kachi uh, that plays in Odd. You have uh, Igo Ogbu. Okay, he was in the under-17. Yeah, you have uh, Arco, like you mentioned, Fred Friday. Um, was uh, was also a player that went to AZ Alkma. He wasn't in the national team. You have uh, uh, Usman Sani. You have so Saleh. You have so many players that uh, I mean the list goes on. It's uh, it's impossible for me to uh, mention all of them that never had a national team career before we took them to Norway. I would say maybe only maximum of five percent were playing for any national team before we took them to Norway. Uh, so uh, yeah, you, I mean, in Nigeria, that's the that's the good thing. You can equally find a, a, a huge talent in an academy, and um, which you can't find the same quality in the Premier League. So, going by statistic or saying that somebody is the top scorer in in the Nigerian Premier League, therefore he would be a great player in no, Europe. No, no. no, I, I, yeah. no, I feel you find the special players in the academies. They're more hungry. They are, they are um, still very young and, and they have this desire to make it. So uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting many, many players, but, but at least, um, yeah, you, you could really, really find the next, the next big thing in the Nigerian academies. That's, that's for sure. I, I, I must say mm. this is a very, good, uh, a very good one from you uh, because saying this, because uh, mm. I've been someone who has been in the game for almost 17 years now or more. And uh, for you to yeah. understand the Nigerian business so that we can actually change the narrative of some of the agents that believe that sure. if you don't play in the national team, you are not good enough. If you, know, if you don't play in the sure. Nigerian Premier League, you are not good enough. So that uh, for, for you naming yeah. the li this list and all of these players are doing pretty very, very well. They are doing very, very well. Yeah. So for you mentioning these names now, mm. I believe uh, they should start changing the mindset. They should look into the academies. Well, good academy, like you mentioned earlier, having good, checking into yeah. good academies and looking at their players, uh, this will uh, help to change uh, the mentality of some of the agents. And I, I, I wish I was, some of them were also going on this trend. And on, let me ask again, on scouting sure. of these players that you never, mm. you've not seen them before, you don't know them before, most of mm. them are at the grassroots. What makes you think they are the right player? Or what do they do differently when they are on the pitch? Or how do you think that, oh, this player that I'm taking is going to be the next superstar? What, 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 what do you see in them differently or that they do differently among their peers? I think the major thing to look up for is them having something extraordinary. Like you could see a player and has extreme speed or is extremely technical. He stands out in a way. Mm -hmm. Then uh, from there, you, you have talks with the player, you, you check his background, you speak to him, you know his mentality. And that's really, really important, especially with, uh, with uh, Nigerian players, knowing that they have the right mentality and everything when you, when you bring them for, for trial. So um, there's no magic around the scouting, actually. It's all about having good scouts. Like I said, I have a, a great team around me that are really good in scouting. They travel around the whole of the country to identify the, the talents. And then we also do our scouting programs, uh, which your team has also been yeah. a part of. And we bring in scouts from various uh, teams also in... Uh, in Norway, not only Norway, but the whole of uh, Europe, actually. So um, it's more of finding that special skill that a player has, uh, trying to translate what you see into the 
for instance, the Norwegian league, because there's a huge difference between the Nigerian and the Norwegian league, yeah. um, especially when it comes to how fast the game is. The game is much faster in, no. in Norway compared to Nigeria. But then you could also find the special players in the Nigerian academies or league that you know, okay, they could add something to, to the, yeah, oh. to the teams uh, here. So um, yeah, sure. I think uh, I think this is oh, a very a, a very good mm. one. Uh, uh, if 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 I may ask again, mm. I I wanted to I, I want to ask you this question uh, uh, specifically again. Why? Because of the young players that may be watching, so that when they find themselves going to mm. a scouting program, they will understand what a scout is actually uh, looking out for. So, what what are the attributes do you look at mm. for in a player during your scouting events? What are the attributes? Like, what are the characteristics you actually look at for? You know, it all depends what position you're looking for. And it all depends what the team in Europe is also looking for. Oh, yeah. I mean, some teams would pl want an attacker to play in a 4-3-3 system. And, you know, in a 4-3-3 system, the main striker has to be big, Shen, strong. An old striker. Be able to hold up the ball. Yes, Really, and then while well, you have other teams that play a four-four-two, where it's more supporting striker, so it varies a lot. I mean, if it's a winger, we look out for speed, uh, ability to go one-on-one -on -one offensively. Um, striker, of course, more of the finishing. Um, yeah.